hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, what the heck is that in Kenny's shop? Episode 4. Well, the first three episodes of this met with fantastic response from all of you. For some reason, you guys like seeing the little trinkets and things that I have around the shop. Um, everybody's shop has them. Those little things that you tuck away, you don't have to do with it, you hang it on the wall, you forget about it for years, and one day you look up and you say, wow, man, I forgot all about that. And it brings back a flood of memories. And that's what this show is all about today. So without further ado... <laughs> Let's see what's in Kenny's shop this week. Now the first thing that I want to showcase for you guys today would be this. And this is a very old paint sprayer. Um, it was given to me many years ago. It is completely fabricated of aluminum. Um, and it is a dead solid unit. Now I don't know if this thing even still functions or even still works but all of the threads are still functioning. Nothing is seized on it. Um, the trigger action still works. This is your air actuation adjustment to allow your trigger to come further back or you screw it in and it can reduce your trigger function. You see I've got it way too little there. Um, but basically you fill your reservoir here with paint and through air pressure, it draws it up and then blows it out the front nozzle here. Um, now I have a couple of nozzles that came with this. I have the one that's on the front here, which is your slot style. And this one here just has like your little hole. I'm, I'm not sure of their functions, but um, I really have to wonder if this thing still works. Now the air hose attachment here the actual attachment for the hose is a little decrepit. It looks like it's taken some damage, but I have to wonder if this would be a common thread for a more modern, uh, say, quick connect to a compressor. It's not meant to be used with anything over 45 PSI, um, so it's not, I don't know, it, it, it's not something that's inaccessible, most home air compressors can put out at least 45 PSI, if not more. Now, when I look at the front and I take this off here, uh, I can see that, yeah, the trigger is still working and it's still drawing the needle to allow the airflow and to allow the paint to blow. It looks like it just might need a little bit of cleaning. And I noticed that when I took off the reservoir, it looks like that the rubber seal, because this thing is so old, yeah, it looks like the seal has cracked. I don't know if you can see that there, but the seal has cracked. And again, it's probably all dried out. So that would have to be replaced and cleaned up. But I have to wonder though, if we clean this up, if it couldn't be used for um, spraying finishes in the shop. I've had it for so long it's been mostly a decoration but I think at some point in time I might like to turn it into an actual usable sprayer. What do you guys think? Anyway there's the first item on today's show um, this antique paint sprayer. So for this next item we are going to go back over 42 years ago when this was made. And this is very fragile at this point in time. I keep it tucked away and safe in the shop. This is um, a plaster version, I guess, of old Ironsides, uh, an old ship from many, many years ago. And what this is all about is back in 1980, I poured plaster into an old Ironsides mold and painted this thing and ended up giving it to my dad for Christmas. And I scratched in 1980 right there, 80, um, to dad from Ken, Merry Christmas. And on the back is scratched in to dad, love Ken. I don't know if the camera shows that or not, but this has been around for 42 years. And of course my father had it for many, many years. And then, um, when he shut down his shop and that sort of thing, 
He asked if I would like it back and sadly dad passed on years later, but I still have this. The fact that dad still had it after all those years shows what it meant to him and the fact that I still have it shows what he meant to me. So there is uh, just another small thing that you never see this, like I said, because it's safely tucked away in a drawer in my shop. Um, I don't leave this out exposed because I'd hate for it to get damaged, but it is carefully stored and uh, just something that you guys might never see even if you do visit the shop. So there you go. From 1980, 42 years ago, uh, the plaster mold of old Ironside that I gave my dad for Christmas. Now, I'm not a meteorologist and I'll never pretend to be one, um, but in most of my videos, if you look on the back wall behind me, just behind my table saw, you will see this, this old ship's wheel. And what this ship's wheel is, is a barometer, a sailor's barometer. Um, I've looked all over on this for a date. I don't see one. I think it's kind of old. Um, just because of the yellowing that has happened on the actual face here. Um, but this was made in Germany. It has, you know, the different weather patterns, uh, stormy, rain, change, fair, uh, very dry. And this is the sailor's barometer. So if you were going to go out sailing that day, you would check the barometer and, and see exactly what the barometer thinks is going to happen. Now, I don't understand how it works. I don't know how it works. I don't know much about barometers. Um, but I kind of have to wonder if it's true or not. Is this, you know, the way it should be? Like, does it work? And today is a beautiful day and it is pointing to fair. So maybe it does work. I don't know. Um, that might be something for me to pay attention to over the next little while and see if how accurate this thing is. I'm not even sure what this dial here is for, which adjusts that brass arm. Uh, maybe it needs a little bit of research to look into this to see exactly how to use it and what it does, because I think it could be kind of cool to report back on how accurate this thing is. But this was given to me quite a few years ago. I believe my father-in-law gave this to me and um, I've never really paid much attention to it. I just like the way it looks. I think it's a really cool item. So, I don't know. Maybe look for it on an update show as to how it works. And who knows, maybe we could clean it up a bit. I know that these arms here, these do remove. They're just brass pins that are, sli that are slid into this wheelbase here. So maybe a little bit of polish on those would clean those up nicely and this would turn out to be a, an even more beautiful piece than what I think it already is. So there you go. The sailor's barometer which hangs over behind the table saw by the wood stove in my shop. Well, I don't know, maybe it is a theme that we've got going on today, but this is the next item I'd like to show you. And what this is, is a fishing guide. Essentially, it's a barometer, again, um, that tells you whether or not you should go fishing. Interestingly enough, this one here is reading at 30 and the sailor's barometer was reading at the same. So maybe they're both functioning as they should. Again, I need to look into it. But it says here, periods of stationary or non-fluctuating pressure increases tendency towards fair luck, even in low pressure zones. With pressure in low zones, surface fishing lessens. Bait should be fished deep. So this basically is a fisherman's guide as to whether or not you should go fishing and what you should expect. Now the copyright date on this from the Taylor Instrument Company is 1939 so it's quite a cool little unit again this dial here rotates and that rotates this dial here and this is for continued low or continued high uh, fishing least and fishing is best on either side so it kind of gives you an idea of whether or not you should go and on the back I found this really interesting and not understanding barometers or altitude. I thought this was kind of cool. 
but you can rotate this plate. There's a little inscribed arrow here and you rotate this plate to dial in your altitude of your location. So your altitude above sea level, you can dial that in. And as you dial that in, it can make it more accurate for the area that you live or that you're fishing. So again, this was given to me once again by my father-in-law because he knows I love stuff like this. And this is just a very cool item being from 1939, that inner, uh, I'm assuming that was white at one point in time. You can see it's got quite the yellowing happening on that. And I don't think there's anything I can do about it. Um, it has seen some wear and tear over the years, some rubbing here at the top, but nonetheless, it is a very cool and very interesting item. And um, yeah, again, I'd like to know a little more about the barometer. I think at the time I got it, it was all about the look of this thing for me because I thought it was kind of a cool device and my father-in-law knows I love fishing. So this is, uh, this is something that's interesting and maybe I need to look into it a little more and report back on it. So there you go, the fishing barometer that hangs on the wall of Kenny's shop. Well, the next item I'd like to present to you is a wicked little piece of weaponry. <laughs> yeah, weaponry if you're a blade of grass. This is my grandfather's old sickle and it is a very cool and very old piece of equipment. Um, I don't know if you can see, but by the tooling here, and the tool marks that are here on the blade, uh, my grandfather would have sharpened this many, many times over as this was not something that hung on the wall of his shop as it does in mine right now. This is something that he used on a regular basis on the east coast of Canada to clean up the taller grass and it still has quite an edge on it. I wouldn't want to mess with it. Um, this was made here I think it says, it's a little worn, but I think it says uh, Slantworth's Severquick made in England. So all of my UK visitors, there you go. This was made in your neck of the woods and uh, it is quite a cool piece. One of the interesting things that I find about this is the way that the handle is mounted onto, um, onto the blade itself and the blade, actually goes right through the handle all the way. And then here at the end, there you can see it. There is the end of the blade that pokes out through this handle and is then bent rounded over onto the end of the handle to keep this from coming out. But it is ra rather old. It is uh, rather useful or was back then when my grandfather used it but it is 100% definitely very cool. And uh, if you're ever looking around the videos, you too will see this hanging on the back wall behind my table saw, um, just by the black boards by my wood stove. This has been sitting there for years. And honest to goodness, this is a very cool piece of uh, history really because this is back in the day before the electric lawnmowers or the gas powered lawnmowers. People couldn't afford things like that back then and they did things manually with scythe and sickle. And uh, this being the sickle and I think I showed my other grandfather's scythe on another program of What the Heck's in Kenny's Shop. I hope you were able to catch that. But either way, there you go my grandfather's sickle, and uh, if you're a blade of grass, boy, oh boy, that's one piece of weaponry right there. <laughs> well, if you are in the trades and you have worked on a construction site at any point in time, this next item will not be odd or strange to you. But if you don't have access to this sort of thing, you may be interested in this. And there are several of these hung on the wall of my shop. And what this is, essentially, it's a pipe bender. Uh, it's used for electrical conduit. For me, being an electrician, I have a full set of these. But it's more of how I acquired them, which is an odd story, than how it, that, that I have them at all, basically. Um, so <clears throat> a friend of mine, 
his dad had several strokes and he wasn't doing well and he would go out for walks and he would find things. He would find old televisions. He would find tools. He would find radios. He would bring them back into his shop and he would sit down and he would tinker with them and fix them. And over the years, he found quite a few of these electrician's pipe benders. And when I first started the trade many, many years ago, um, I was over there visiting my buddy and the dad said, so you're going in to be an electrician, eh? And yeah, yes sir, yes sir. And the next thing I knew, he handed me a bunch of these pipe benders and said, here you go, uh, here's a present for you. And being quite new in the trade at the time, I didn't even know what they were. So as years went on, um, I learned very quickly what they were because a big part of the trade, of course, is bending electrical conduit. So the way that these things work is that your conduit goes into this end here and it hooks the conduit. There's this little hook on the end and you basically using specific measurements and markings here. You can see there's a star here. That's for your take up and you have angle markings all the way along by using that and pulling the conduit down along this curved ridge, you get very perfect, very precise bends that are not kinked and not distorted. And uh, they do a really great job. They are specific to the size of conduit that you are bending. So half inch, three quarter, one inch. Once you start getting above the one inch mark, um, really you are looking at power benders or hydraulic benders. Uh, some people do still use inch and a quarter um, hand or manual benders. I, I'm, you know what, leave that to the young guys. I don't do that stuff anymore. But there you go. So if you ever see these at a flea market or a, a rummage sale or uh, even um, a yard sale and you're wondering what the heck this is, well now you know what this is. This is an electrician's metal conduit bender. Well, it's just my opinion, but I think I have saved the coolest item for last. And <laughs> check this out. I don't know what caliber this shell casing was. I'm not a gun guy, I'm not a military guy, so I really don't know. I think it might be a 50 cal, but I'm not 100% sure. But either way, I know someone who was in the Canadian Navy and this is one of the shell casings or one of the spent shell casings from one of the weapons that they fire on the ship. And what I've done is I've taken some walnut and I turned a projectile. Now this is not to spec at all. It's probably very wrong from what it should be. But I've turned this projectile and inside I have basically filled this with buckshot to give it some serious weight. It's quite heavy. And I have then poured resin in to seal that um, the buckshot in there to give it its weight. And then the projectile just snaps on top. And this is actually a decoration that's in my office in the house. I keep it on a small shelf there. Um, if you remember quite some time ago, we made that small little trinket corner shelf. Well, this is one of the items that sits on that trinket shelf. But this is not what I want to show you. This is not the item of what the heck is in Kenny's shop. This is its baby brother. The item that I want to show you is this bad boy. Look at that. That is unreal. I, uh... Again, I got it from the person I know that's in the Canadian Navy. And again, it's a spent shell. And it needs to be cleaned up. But this one here at one point in time also looked like this one. So you can see that it can be polished and cleaned quite nicely. So the idea I have for this is that on a show, I think I'd like to look up the specs of this particular shell to see the size of the projectile. And uh, it has a serial number on the base and it has uh, the code here as to what shell it is and what have you. So I'll probably look that up and see exactly what the specifications of the projectile are. And it's taken some damage here, of course. Um, the other one had the same damage, so I would have to re-round this and reshape it and clean it up. But uh, I think it could be a cool future project 
to turn the projectile part of this and turn this into like a shop doorstop sort of thing. But either way, this is absolutely wicked. I don't know the caliber of this particular shell. Again, I am not a weapons guy. I'm not a military guy. I really don't know much about it. Um, but what I do know is that this is very cool. Um, I'm pretty sure this would clean up just fine. The other one cleaned up fantastically. Um, just a little bit of light metal polish and some elbow grease will really bring this to life. So who knows, maybe you'll see that on a future show where we will uh, bring this to life and turn a projectile for it and turn it into a doorstop. Whether, whether or not it needs weight in it, I don't know. The thing is pretty darn heavy as it is. That base weighs a ton. So anyway, that's it. Uh, Kenny's uh, great big shell casing and uh, its little brother, of course. And there you have it. What the heck is that in Kenny's shop episode four? Guys, when I first came up with this idea, I never thought for an instant that it would last past episode one. Um, but your response to these shows have been absolutely incredible. I've really enjoyed a lot of the feedback that I've gotten from you guys because obviously some of the things I have here on the walls, I'm not as knowledgeable as some of you out there on them. So you guys have shot me ideas and tips and, and, and corrected me in some cases, which is good too. But either way, if you have ideas or, or tips or more information on any of these items, shoot it my way. I'd love to hear it. You can either put it in a comment below or send me an email at kennye at a cut above woodworkings.com. I'd love to hear from you. Guys, all of our shops have this stuff in them, whether it be a sentimental attachment or whether it be the cool factor, whether it be family items, it doesn't matter why you keep these things or why we put them in our shops. The fact is that we all have them and they're really a cool item. I don't keep anything I don't like and I like everything that I keep. So. Um, everything that's in here on a wall or hung from the ceiling or dangling off a nail, all of it means something to me, otherwise it wouldn't be here. And sometimes the memories that are associated with these are special as well. So before you throw that item out from your shop, just think about it. Think about what it means to you and whether or not you really want to get rid of it. Because years down the road, you may look back and think, gee, I wish I didn't get rid of that. That would have been so cool to have. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. These are fun. These are fun, fun shows to produce. I kind of like going through the walls in my shop too and seeing things that in some cases I've forgotten about for a long time. So I get to look at them almost firsthand again too and I get very excited to see them and think, oh gee, I forgot about that. That thing is so awesome. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Send me your comments down below as to things that you have in your shop. Send me an email, send me some pictures, whatever you'd like. I'd love to see it all. I hope you're gonna join me again next week, guys, when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.